During the Cold War, the Soviet Union conducted secret missions to reach Mars. They hid these missions to gain an advantage over the US in the space race. We don't know the exact number of missions, but NASA recently found declassified evidence of the Soviets landing on Mars. During the Cold War, the USR was secretly working on a project to send a man to Mars, which would be more significant than a lunar landing. The reasons for their secrecy remained unknown for several decades. Such ambitious plans were hidden because of the need to maintain the image of a strong power and to avoid mistakes. Only recently have these secret missions and their significance become known to the world. During the Cold War, the Soviet Union's focus shifted towards Mars as an exploration target, going beyond the Moon. In the early 1960s, they launched missions to explore Mars, marking a significant milestone in space exploration. Mars, being similar to Earth in various aspects, such as its rotation period and tilted orbital plane, presented a fascinating opportunity for scientific research. The Soviet Union's Mars program consisted of unmanned spacecraft missions, with the first mission, Mars 1, launched in November 1962. It was propelled into space by the advanced Molnya 8K-78 rocket. The Soviet Union's Mars missions aimed to investigate the Martian environment. The Soviet Union launched Mars 1, an interplanetary station aiming to be the first nation to reach Mars. The mission's objectives included gathering data about interplanetary space, studying Mars' magnetic field, and capturing scientific data about the planet and its atmosphere. Mars 1 was equipped with advanced instruments and a radio system for transmitting images back to Earth. Unfortunately, communication with Mars 1 was lost halfway through the journey due to a malfunction in its orientation sensors, resulting in a total power loss. Subsequent Mars 2 and spacecrafts were destroyed during launch. By 1971, the Soviet Union had advanced in their M4 program, including the Mars 2 and Mars 3 missions. These missions aim to achieve a soft landing on Mars and conduct surface exploration using identical spacecraft with orbiter and lander modules equipped with rovers. The descent modules were intended to capture images and gather data about the Martian atmosphere, soil properties, and meteorological conditions. On May 19, 1971, Mars 2 was launched and reached Mars on November 27, 1971. However, during the descent, an unexpected problem occurred. The descent module entered the Martian atmosphere at a steep angle and a high velocity, causing the onboard computer to issue an erroneous command during the landing maneuvers. As a result, the lander crashed onto the Martian surface at 45 degrees south and 30 degrees west, resulting in the loss of the spacecraft. Mars 2 entered an orbit around Mars, while Mars 3 successfully landed on the Martian surface, but communication was lost shortly after. Dust storms may have caused the communication failure. Mars 3 lost contact due to a powerful dust storm. Despite this, Mars orbiters captured obscured images of the Martian surface. The mission discovered the lower surface pressure and carbon dioxide atmosphere of Mars. The Mars 3 mission achieved the first image from Mars' surface, showcasing its desolate landscape. The orbiter experienced a fuel loss, resulting in a longer orbit. The mission also included a small rover named Prop-M, equipped with detection bars to navigate the terrain. Communication between the rover and Earth faced significant time delays. Mars 3 successfully landed and separated from the rover. The rover's activation signal took an hour to be received, but then abruptly vanished after 14.5 seconds. A powerful dust storm during landing was deduced as the cause for the loss of communication. The Mars 3 mission was considered successful. Mars 4 was launched on February 10, 1974, but experienced a flaw in the retro rockets, preventing it from entering Mars orbit. Fire as a result, Mars 4 flew by the planet at a distance of 2, 200 kilometers despite the setback it captured one swath of pictures and some radio occultation data marking the first detection of the nightside ionosphere on Mars after the flyby it continued to transmit interplanetary data from a heliocentric orbit taking another shot at Mars on February 12, 1974. 
Mars 5 successfully reached Mars and was inserted into an elliptical orbit with an inclination of 35.3 degrees the spacecraft's two photo television cameras nearly integrated with the planet's rotation could be commanded to take 12 pictures during each close approach the Vega camera utilized a wide area 52 mm lens with color filters while the Zulfa camera utilized a telescopic 350 mm lens and long pass orange filter images were transmitted in a rapid 220 line mode and selected pictures were retransmitted at 880 or 1760 line resolution. Mars 5 collected data for 22 orbits until a loss of pressurization in the transmitter housing occurred ending its operation during Operation Mars 5 managed to capture about 100 photos. Unfortunately, two weeks later, this space probe also experienced a failure not backing down on August 5, 1973. The Soviets launched Mars 6, which entered an intermediate Earth orbit. Before setting course on a trajectory towards Mars, it arrived at Mars on March 12, 1974. The descent module separated from the bus and entered the Martian atmosphere at a speed of 5.6 km per second. After slowing down the parachute opened allowing the module to collect data and transmit it directly to the bus for immediate relay to Earth. Unfortunately, contact with the Mars 6 descent module was lost, possibly during retro rocket firing or impact with the surface. Mars 6 transmitted data for 224 seconds, providing the first atmospheric data from Mars, but much of it was unreadable due to a transistor flaw. Mars 7 successfully entered orbit, but had a problem with either attitude control or retro rockets, causing the landing probe to separate prematurely. The Soviet officials handled the situation by declaring the launch's state secrets and disguising the failed Mars missions as satellites when they ended up in Earth orbit. The Mars 2 and Mars 3 missions were launched in 1971 and kept secret by the Soviet Union. The fate of the Mars lander and rover remained unknown for many years. In 2007, a high-resolution image sparked renewed hope, and in 2011, light-colored debris resembling the Mars 3 parachute was discovered. Despite setbacks, the Mars 3 mission provided valuable lessons for future missions. Mars continues to be a focus of NASA's scientific endeavors. NASA's upcoming missions, including the Mars sample return, MSR mission are set to advance interplanetary research. The MSR mission, a collaboration between NASA and the European Space Agency, ESO, aims to bring Martian samples back to Earth for in-depth analysis. The mission builds upon the Mars 2020 Perseverance rover's exploration of the Jezero crater, collecting rock and soil samples for future retrieval. The MSR process involves launching a sample retrieval lander with a small rover to retrieve the stored samples at a Mars ascent vehicle to launch them into orbit. An Earth return orbiter will then bring the samples back to Earth, marking a monumental step in planetary exploration. The Mars sample return mission will collect samples from Mars and bring them back to Earth for analysis in well-equipped laboratories. This will provide valuable data about Mars history, geological evolution, and the potential for past life. Although the Soviet Mars program faced challenges and setbacks, it laid the foundation for future exploration and led to technological advancements. Thank you for watching Voyager.